Alright folks, uh, Jonathan here. Where have I been? Alright, so I've been working. As you can see, I've been picking up a bunch of wrecks for one thing. Cars rolling over, SUVs rolling over, and head-ons, and you name it, I've been doing it. But anyway, I've uh, been getting stuck with a bunch of them. Been getting paid for a few, which keeps the bills paid, and the lights on, and the insurance paid. So, uh, where are we at? Okay, I had a few things I wanted to address on this. Okay. One thing. I had a lot of people talk about the gear oil for the bronze gear unit. Uh, GL5 is what you cannot use because it eats into the, the uh, bronze gear. But it will also eat into bronze synchronizers. So you don't want to use it in your older transmissions. Uh, what I used was a, hold on, Pro 4 gears and it's uh, actually multiple purpose high point oil it's 140 which is about the same as 60 weight motor oil and uh, you can use a 90 but they they require a 90 from 32 degrees and below so this is what we use this was $28 a gallon uh, they got some mobile lube stuff that's uh, more expensive but it's harder to get here so that's something that I could order locally through my nap and he had it there quick. Now, they make a lot of gear oils. Here's a new one that uh, GM is putting out, a synthetic, which I didn't want to use because I'm scared of some synthetics because I don't know what you can and can't use on bronze. So, I just wanted to show you, this stuff here has got the new grape scent. Now, I don't know if it tastes like grape yet or not, but I'll let you know when I try it. Hi folks, uh, picked up a box truck and got it for the engine transmission and then my son's going to use it the box for storage so we're going to try to start it up it's been sitting a long time and i know the gas tank we're not trusting it so i'm going to just hook up a uh a line to the fuel pump it's just an old 350 four volt main four barrel with a 400 turbo and the transmission had been rebuilt recent so i think it's uh i looked at the casting numbers it's a four bolt but it's an older block so the block's mid-70s, uh, the engine, I mean, the, the van's actually an 83, so it has definitely been changed one time. But let's see what we can do. It does have hydro boost, but I did notice this. I don't know why. That's not good at all. Good thing I'm not uh, riding down the road trying to stop. All right, folks, so we got it rolling over. It's a little gas in the carburetor. See what will happen. All right. You want to come? Inside or over out there? Oh, okay. I'll try people that want to know that's not burning anything really the gasket maybe we're just taking out on the side a little bit but mainly it's just burning the gas off so I'd rather get the gas off of it now we'll go ahead and let it burn off and that way less of a chance of it taking off the next time so plus my hands are cold but it's cold and wet out here and it's nice to have a little bit of a fire okay so we wasn't getting any fuel it wasn't pumping but I took the line off 
and uh, turned it over, and it took a few seconds, but it finally started pumping. I don't know if it had air in there or what, but uh, I don't know if the float was sticking or how it was doing it, but uh, we've got it back on there, and uh, we're going to try it again. I may still have to do something to get that float unstuck. I tapped on it. All right, try it, son. Got it choked here. All right, we're going to... All right, try it again. but it is cold as can be out here. Sounds like Thomas was hard a little bit on. Definitely got a belt issue. That's just steam, so it ain't... Yeah, it ain't no... Thank goodness it ain't no oil smoke. Alright, let's see if we can do something with that belt. Driving me nuts. Alright, folks. Got the diesel shut off. Got the belt tightened up. Sounds really good. Got an exhaust leak. I'm not smoking anymore. Go. Okay, so this was a shot in the dark. You know, this is one of them deals where you buy one, you buy a sheet. It's where you buy one and you buy it cheap and you don't know whether it's good or not. You know, you, you, you go by what you're told, but now the friend of mine that I bought this from, uh, if he told me there was a you know spaceship heading toward my house i'd i would get out in other words he ain't gonna bs me whatsoever but you know sometimes someone might bs him and then you know the, i i get second story or third story sometimes and you never know but uh he said he was told it was good he, transmission i know has been rebuilt it's got a rebuild tag on it it's 400 turbo so we've got a good engine and transmission to put into something and I've got that 70 Chevrolet pickup truck. It's either 70 71, I can't even remember now. I have to pull the title back out and look, but uh, I'd love to stick this down in it. And uh, this thing's full of antifreeze. The oil was good. Transmission fluid's clean as can be. Now, you can't tell so much because it's been sitting, but you look from under it, you can tell that it's a new transmission. And he actually, uh, the guy I got this from, knows the man that built it and knows that he's a, a good builder and reputable company. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is going to work out really good, and then my son's going to get him a nice storage unit, storage box. So we're going to be chopping this thing apart here shortly. Okay, what I wanted to say, everybody kept saying something about them uh, rafters over there where I picked this crane up from, where I had to run through that building. It's kind of ironic because I sold him them uh, probably 20-something years ago. Well, it was over 20 years ago. And I had bid on a job that lightning had struck two uh, chicken houses and burned them both down and they uh, it's kind of weird because there was four houses but it was the two houses further apart which you know it is what it is I don't know what to you know I don't know what uh, lightning does <laughs> you know I don't know what it was thinking but that's how it happened so anyway uh, there was about a hundred foot of one of the chicken houses left these were 300 foot houses someone had just put their, or they had just put chickens in them one of the uh, local uh, poultry places, Golden Poultry or Purdue or one of them. And, you know, chicken farming is a big deal in this area. So anyway, uh, so it burned all the chickens up and I put a bid in on it. And I know I was low, I was young, uh, you know, ready to work hard. I had a track loader, an old case track loader, 
an old dump truck. And so I bid the job, got the job pretty easily, took all the copper that was out and took it in. I got pretty good money out of the copper. Then I took the, uh, the tin, I actually had Leon and Metal Company here local bring their trailers out. And I just kept loading trailers. When I get one full of tin, they'd come pick it up. And there was about 100 foot of one of the buildings left. And I actually sold that building to him. And I took it down and I delivered the rafters that you've seen to his land there. So they were actually mine, that and the tin at one time. But now with it being a chicken house, it didn't sit up so high. So he actually uh, put them on them telephone poles. But, uh, but anyway, one thing that I am doing that uh, I hadn't really talked about it. I bought a 50 by 70 building and it's used, taken apart, but I wanna put it back together, but I'm gonna put it back together as a 50 by 50. And I'm gonna put it on this land that I bought and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get cleared off here and pull some permits and go ahead and get, do whatever I gotta do. If I gotta do engineer drawings, or you know whatever I end up having to do. Uh, I've got friends that are engineers that'll help me out with that. I started a little bit with skid steer the other day, but we're gonna clear this out and we're gonna put that building right here and face it toward toward my property that I've already got here. And uh, that's the plan, but 50 by 50. But like I said, it was kind of funny that, uh, that you know, everybody kept saying something about that building. And I had actually owned that thing at one time. Okay, the KW over there. I think it's a K100. I think that's what everybody said it was. I'm not up on them. Uh, that was a 318 Detroit truck with a 13 speed at one time. So he had uh, a guy go through the engine and rebuild it. And he took in... Uh, and the engine didn't hold up. So there was a big controversy over that. The guy didn't stand behind his work, was supposed, uh, was, was supposed to pay him back most of the money, never did. Uh, he ended up junking the engine and because it was in pieces and he junked the transmission. Now, the only thing is, is I remember 20 something years ago, I sold him two engines. Uh, they were 318 Detroits that were backup generator engines I've got from a local salvage yard and I asked him about them engines and he said that he couldn't remember them uh, but I you know I know I sold them to him but I just don't know what happened to them and they were really low hours uh, power unit engines that could have been one of them could have been put in the truck but so engine transmissions missing for that truck the truck's pretty rough from sitting uh, he don't really want to sell it I don't think okay let's hit it one more time I'm tickled with this that sold me this he sells me a lot of good stuff so I like dealing with him oh yeah it's gonna be a fine fine truck okay folks so my compressor started giving trouble this is a Curtis now don't get me wrong, the compressor head on this thing is old as can be, uh, probably 40, 50 years old. Anyway, it started making a noise, oh, about midsummer. Changed the oil in it, slowly got louder. Uh, so anyway, we're changing the head out now. Now this is a very cheap, this is the cheapest they make, uh, two stage, 175 PSI, five horse, five and a half horse compressor. And I'm sure it's probably from China. Uh, but I had ordered this and been saving it to put on here and I'm finally getting around to putting it on. And these things are less than $300 shipping and all. So I'll let you know how it works out, but we're in the middle of changing it out now. Get everybody to watch it. We're gonna uh, get back on a few things here. The weather's been crappy. Uh, we're gonna get start getting this building up. And I think I'm gonna pick the stuff up for the crane here Monday. And so we'll get started on building the boom for the crane. We'll get that knocked out pretty quick. It's not going to take that much. And then, uh, let me see. I've got uh, some other things to do to it, brake-wise and stuff. But, I mean, we're, we're going to move along on it as quick as we can. And, uh, you know, got a few things we want to get on. 
I, I, I've got to get a shop together. I, you know, I put it off for years and I've always said, well, you know, next year, next year. And then, you know, I got this shop that I built, you know, 20 something years ago. And then I filled it full of machines to where I can't really get anything in there to work on them. So I'm going to build a shop that I'm able to pull something in and get some work done on. And it's getting too cold in the winters and too hot in the summers for me. So we're going to take care of that problem. So anyway, I sure do appreciate everybody watching and uh, stick with me here. I won't leave everybody hanging too long, too long anyway. All right, bye.